Thank you, Raghu. Good afternoon. Uh, even as I speak, uh, last night, I can share with you, the ISIS came out with a video, a 15-minute video, titled The Country of India Between Pain and Hope. And it's one of the videos that feature Indians. Obviously, their identities have been masked. And uh, it seems that it was prepared in preparation for the results of the elections that were held recently, because they berate both the Congress and the ruling party, the BJP, in that particular video. And I can assure you that uh, the appearance of the video on the eve of this uh, talk is purely co coincidental. And this video is something which has followed three days back. There was another video put out by the AQIS, which was titled Sharia or Democracy. Now, what we are observing is a competitive radicalization attempt between two organizations. And as things stand today, we have to face the threat and the attempt by both the AQIS and the ISS to target India and to draw support from certain elements within this country. The nature of the threat is something which needs to be analyzed. It is a threat where developments in distant lands is firing up the imagination of the target audience. And this is in contrast to earlier situation where even 25 years of insurgency in JNK did not evoke any radical sentiments in the rest of the country. We need to understand that technology has acted as a major force multiplier in terms of propagation of radical ideas. The concept of a caliphate has given a transnational character to certain localized conflicts in other parts of the world. And this is something which is to be understood. What has happened is, in the recent years, especially after Syria, that localized conflicts have been kind of extended as threats to the identity of a religion or the existence, existential threat to a religion. And the concept of caliphate itself has been propagated as the final antidote to the humiliation or even otherwise exploitation of a particular religious uh, community. It is therefore essential to understand that the ISIS phenomena has succeeded to its effective use of a platform with which its target audience is very familiar. According to an American study, the median age of the Muslim population is between 23 and 25 years. And we can see that how it has progressed, the art of propagation, how it has progressed in the last decade or so. If you recall, it started with the use of VHS cassettes, where you had grainy images of, uh, you know, uh, 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 extremist leaders exhorting their, uh, their cadres. And today you have a social media platform where smartphones have evolved dramatically in the last decade or so. The use of Islamic symbols intertwined with motives of raw power, the clashing cop, has been relentlessly dim disseminated through notes, amplifiers, and shout outs. This is how the uh, social media has been used. Social media has been used both for propagation of ideas and also for 
uh, ensuring secure communications within the cadres. At the same time, I, I would like to mention that there is a contrarian view whether online propagation is leading to radicalization or is it already radicalized persons that are getting drawn to the propaganda of ISIS and their AQIS. To me personally, the debate is needless as it still poses a security threat in form of re uh, recruiting sympathizers who may at best be drafted for logical support, logistic support, or at worst become lone wolves. That brings us to the core question. How do we tackle the problem? Blocking the net or bringing down the websites is not the answer, and it has proved to be ineffective. There is a need to take recourse to technology and develop sophisticated software tools to identify in an automated manner the offensive content, identify the nodes propagating, and find ways to geofence areas which may reveal hotspots to enable law and order machinery to use other means to mitigate the effects of the propaganda. For this, it must be first recognized that the internet does not offer itself to a compartmentalized approach for scrutiny among agencies. While privacy issues, which had been mentioned by Mr. Dougal in the previous talk, have their relevance, society needs to accept that safety lies in early detection of undesirable tendencies and adoption of technology through metadata and big data analytics with commensurate computational capacities, which can perhaps assist in uh, <coughs> seeking an answer or finding solution to some of these issues. Here I would like to mention that there is a constantly a need to monitor sentiment in geographically delimited areas. Sentiment not only to issues related to within a community, but to also to monitor its reactions to developments outside. Cyberspace is an area where there is a need for close collaborative cooperation among different agencies. And without that, I'm afraid, the radicalization threat cannot be met successfully. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.